section has to do with importing projects. Often, we will have projects that originated outside of PWA, and we need to bring them into the environment. This should not be part of your typical project creation process, but rather a one-off occasion or when you're initially rolling out the tool. You may have a number of projects that have already started or are in flight, and you're just bringing project server or project online um, into your into your organization. In that case, you would definitely be importing projects. In this scenario, I have already identified a project that I'm going to import, and it's available to you in the exercise files. It's just simply called Module 5 Import. Now, this particular project will have resources associated to it. And if you recall, during the lecture, we talked about the different areas of, that we have to be aware of when we're importing in a project. So let me go and open that project just to get us started. So I'm going to hit File, hit Open, and then I'm going to browse to the location. Now, I just recently browsed there, so it's available to me here, and it's called Module 5 Import. So you'll want to navigate to that area if you're following along with me here. The first thing I want you to be aware of is the resources that are in this particular project. So I'm going to right click my view bar area and navigate down into the resource sheet. And what you'll notice within the resource sheet are, as I mentioned, some existing resources. One of those resources developer has the icon next to it that it's an indication that it's a generic resource. So generic resources really transcend the notion of PWA and they go into even on the client side. So you can always create these generics. Now I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart just from a, a starting point perspective. And really what you would do at this point would just simply do a save as or perform the save as step. So I'm going to go up to File and Save As, and my intention is to save this to the project web app. So what you might be noticing is that I can continue to work with this project file even though I'm connected to PWA, but yet it's a local file. It's just when you want to then move it to PWA that we have to perform the Save As to basically tell it that now we want it to be an enterprise project. So from File and then Save As, it gives me the options of saving it to the different locations, including, of course, the Project Web App. Now, I will almost always recommend that you use the Import Wizard when you're bringing projects in. I also recommend that the project managers that own the project also would be the user that is importing the project as opposed to an administrator. I'll click on Save, and by checking the wizard, we're basically telling Project that we want to walk through, step by step, the importing of this project. So it's going to be looking for some very specific areas that we need to address. And those two, as I mentioned earlier, will be the resources that you have within the project schedule and any customizations that you have created or you have performed against that schedule, particularly around custom field. And we'll see that here in a moment. So the very first thing it's looking for is it's saying that you have or potentially have local resources in this project. You want this to be an enterprise project, yet it's loaded with resources. So the first thing you would do is to map those. Because if you bring a project file in and it has resources within it, and those are the same resources that are out in the enterprise resource pool, Project wants to map them and map them properly. So the first option I get in this step number one is to map the resources. So we'll click on that. Now Project is pretty smart. It can actually recognize the resource that's both in the enterprise resource pool and the one that you have locally. And the reason for that is it's just simply matching up the first name and last name. So one of the things that you can do when you are importing in projects is that before you actually attempt to do the save is make sure that the names look the same in the enterprise resource pool 
as well as your local file. And so you can see that the, the Aaron Painter is matching up nicely here with the enterprise resources. Also the ABC contractors, because it does not find that resource in the enterprise resource pool, you'll notice right here in the middle, it says map to enterprise question mark. In other words, do you want to map this? Is there an opportunity to map it, right? It gives you that choice here. So if you did have an enterprise resource and maybe you named it a little bit different, you still get the opportunity of telling it, yes, I do want to map it. And I'm going to go find the resource that it's appropriate to, right? So maybe there's a, a resource in here that actually represents the ABC contractors. Okay, so you still have that option. I'm going to tell it no because I do want to keep it as a local resource. You'll notice developer as well as Steve Masters matches up perfectly. Okay, so I'll click OK. So that step basically went out and grabbed those enterprise resources and replaced them with your local resources all from within that one screen. Then I'll continue to step two. And this step is basically just verifying what you've done. In fact, it's saying you've brought in these resources. There are no errors. But it's also indicating that a local resource was created, right? And so this is an opportunity for you to fix errors. And that's why we like to use the wizard, because before you actually attempt to save it to PWA, you get the chance to fix these uh, potential issues that you might run into. So I'll continue to step three. Again, we're moving through this. And now in this step, it wants to know, do you have any custom fields? And if you do, let's map them up properly. So I'll map my fields, and here, this is the local file. It's looking for any customization that you might have performed around this local file, and it would map it to your enterprise task field. Okay. Now, speaking of these local fields, you can work with them, create them, and manage them as much as you need to. Just bear in mind that if you don't perform the mapping here, it will be isolated to just this project schedule. Okay, It's not considered to be an enterprise field. In other words, the data won't be moved over as it should be. So I'll cancel out of that. And then we're going to continue to step four. Right, It's again looking for potential errors. Right, And then continue to step five. And only at this point is it saying, you're error free. You're good to go. Now you can save it to the server. So I'll go ahead and hit save here. And it prompts me for the dialog box that we would typically see when we're just simply first, first saving the project schedule. Okay. And like I said, we could go right from file, save as, and go right into the server, and we would see the same dialog box. What we're missing is the opportunity to check for errors, to check for any issues before we actually do this, because we wouldn't want to save here and then get some message that says, hey, go fix this, right? So we kind of address that early on.